Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Spinal Hygiene Podcast. I'm Dr. Tabor Smith. In today's episode, we're going to talk about how important range of motion is for the spine. Now, look, this, uh, this is not debatable. There's been dozens, maybe no, actually probably hundreds of studies, maybe even thousands of studies on, on spinal range of motion. And uh, every healthcare profession, from chiropractors to physical therapists to uh, orthopedic surgeons, they know that there is a normal range for a range of motion, and then there's a decreased range, and we know what the planes of motion are for the spine. And in a lot of those studies, they have been associated with the overall health of the spine, and then vice versa, decreased ranges of motion have been associated with breakdown and deterioration of the spine. So let's just go through a few uh, little basics about range of motion and just uh, some anatomy about, the, about your spine. Did you know that your spine has 24 movable segments called vertebrae? Now there's a difference uh, in your spine than anywhere else in your body as far as bones go because your arm bone is one long bone. We, call it, we actually call it a long bone. Actually, the... Uh, the lower part of your arm is made up of two long bones. The upper part of the arm is made up of one long bone. Uh, the, when you look at your leg, your femur, um, the upper portion of your leg is one long bone. The lower portion of your leg is two long bones, just like in the lower portion of your arm. And the reason why we have a little bit of movement in our arms and our legs is because of our joints, our shoulder joint, our elbow joint, and our wrist. But that allows us to move. You can't move your uh, your arm in the middle of a bone, right? Because there's no joint there, won't allow it to move, it's very sturdy. Now in your spine, it, it, God could have made it one long bone, just like your femur, and then we'd all be stuck in one position, we wouldn't have any range of motion. Uh, or we, he could have put one joint in there, right? And so just like your elbow, and you would have been able to bend at one spot. But no, in fact, your spine was created, you know, I, I believe in a creator, or if you believe in evolve, uh, evolution, then your spine evolved, okay, and it, with the ability to move. And so this is important. Those 24 segments in your spine, in between each segment is a disc. And that disc space allows you to bend, move, and uh, be able to do the things that you do. Now, it just so happens because it was created for movement that it actually requires movement in order for it to stay healthy. This is called imbibition. We may have mentioned it in some of the earlier episodes, but imbibition is a motion or moving or a pumping of the disc inside your spine. This pumping of the disc allows nutrients in, waste materials out. Nutrients in, waste materials out. What do you think happens when a joint in your spine loses its range of motion? and it can't move through a full range of motion anymore. Well, I'm hoping that you said it breaks down and it deteriorates or it degenerates, and you'd be right, it does. Um, a lot of different studies have shown this, but we know for a fact that imbibition is needed or pumping or moving is needed to keep those discs healthy. So what I wanna do is I wanna show you what the proper ranges of motion are or show you at least what the planes of motion are and then show you a specific exercise that you can start using on a daily basis that will help you keep good range of motion. A lot of people in our society today have not moved their spine through a full range of motion in years. I mean, think about it. If they don't go out and if they don't work out regularly, if you don't go to the gym, and especially if you have a sedentary lifestyle or if you have a desk job that you, you're limited in your movement, you may not have moved your spine through a full range of motion in years. So, this really has a lot of benefits when we teach uh, people to do this simple range of motion exercise every day, and, and then it ensures them that they will get that full range of motion going in through their spine. So the spine has three planes of motion, and not only should the spine move through these plane, uh, three planes of motion, it should move through them fully and symmetrically. So let's look here. The first plane of motion is forward and back. And if you're just listening in on the podcast, and you're not going to be able to see what I'm drawing here. So uh, basically, you just bend forward like you're touching your toes, and then you can bend back like you're looking up in the sky, and you're, looking, you're bending back with your, with your spine. So that's the first plane of motion. The second plane of motion is what we call lateral bending or left and right bending. So in, in this case, you would put your arms to your side, you would slide, you would laterally bend, let's say you were gonna to bend to the left, you would slide your hand down your leg to the knee, 
and that would be a lateral bending, that would be a bending of your spine to the left. And then the opposite direction, and the other side of that plane of motion, would be if you slid your right hand down your leg to the right knee, and you're bending to the right, all right? So we covered two planes of motion, forward and back, and then side to side. Now there is a third plane of motion, and that is rotation. So your spine moves forward and back, side to side, and then you can rotate to the left, and you can rotate to the right, okay? Now, all we have to do on a daily basis, and if you are somebody who has a desk job, I suggest you do it about every 30 minutes or hour, is to do what we call the ROM stretch. And that is to take your spine to the end range of each one of these planes of motion and hold it for 10 seconds. This should take you about a minute. So you wanna bend forward, and you don't have to stretch or bounce or push. Just let the weight of your body bend forward. You can even uh, bend at the knees some. And you want to hold that stretch for 10 seconds. Then put your hands on your hips, look up at the ceiling, bend back as far as you can, hold that for 10 seconds. That's the first plane of motion. And now you move to the second plane of motion, lateral bending. So we're going to slide our hand down our leg to the knee, hold it for 10 seconds to the left and then slide your right hand down the knee and hold it to the right for 10 seconds to the right. Okay, now the last plane of motion we're going to do is rotation. And all you have to do is hold your hands together in front of you, turn all the way to the left, hold for 10 seconds, turn all the way to the right, hold for 10 seconds. So if you Take 10 seconds at the end of each range. There are range of motion. There are six stretches that you would do. So six times 10 is 60 seconds. It should take you one minute a day to do this. Now again, if you have, uh, if you're riding, driving in the car, when you stop, do it. Uh, if you're sitting at a desk, do it. But this exercise will help you keep great range of motion and then hopefully help you prevent or at least lower your risk factors for spinal degeneration. All right. Thanks so much. We'll catch you on the next episode.